Today I'm in Toledo, Ohio, and I'm going to be doing some stockpile surveys using just my iPhone 15 Pro, and we'll be comparing the results using a Mavic 3 Enterprise. Now, in today's project, we have several stockpiles with different materials and different types of objects. Everything from concrete rocks to sandy gravel. And we're going to be doing it all using the LiDAR X3 app. The special thanks to LiDAR X3 for sponsoring today's video and giving us an inside look at the capabilities of this app and how easy it is to measure stockpiles with your iPhone. Now, this is the first pile that we're going to work on. And I'm going to go ahead and load up the LiDAR X3 app. Okay, very good. And then all I have to do is hit the scan button down at the bottom. And as you can see, I get a live view of my camera. And what I can do now is just take a picture of the stockpile. So there we go. Cool. And now I can switch my phone vertically. And by pressing the play button, I can start collecting data. So go ahead and hit play. And now the LiDAR sensor will start to collect data on this stockpile. And the goal here is to figure out how much material we have. This is looking good. I'm gonna try to get a little bit closer here to make sure I get as much detail as possible. Very nice. Closing in here. Okay, and we'll hit stop. And then I will select use scan. Now it's gonna ask me to select a site. So I'm on a landfill, so I'm gonna select landfill site. Next it'll ask for my GPS coordinates. And this is just to kind of save where the project is. So I'll just hit the little uh, location button and that'll save my current location. Material, this right here is concrete. And then the type, this is rocks. Okay, everything looks good. I'll hit submit. And this will upload the information to the cloud and it'll process within a few minutes. So while that's processing, I'm gonna go ahead and do the next stockpile. Okay, so we have another rock pile with concrete material. I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture of this stockpile. And now I will start collecting data. So I'll try to get as much of it as I can. There we go, we got all the way to the top. Let's come down and we'll keep collecting data along the side of this pile. This looks good. Coming on over here. I wanna make sure I get this section up here as much as I can. All right, we'll come down over here. Grab the back end of the pile. I'll walk a little bit on the pile because it is rock, so I know it's a stable ground. Keep collecting information here on the left side of the pile. And now on the front, we should be pretty much all set. I'll go ahead and hit stop and use scan. Now, same as before, this is on the landfill. Um, I can update this. It's a little bit over, but we'll update the GPS coordinates. Okay, let's do the next pile. Now, this one's a little bit smaller, so I will take a picture first of the pile. Okay, and now I'll get close and we can start scanning this pile. Here we go, collecting as much information as we can with our LiDAR sensor. Coming around back here. And it looks like this pile is a lot easier to scan given that size is comparable to like, I don't know, under 10 feet or three meters. Yeah, this one's a lot easier to scan. I can get a lot closer to it. Here we go. This all looks good. And we'll just close up here any gaps that we might have. And okay, I'll go ahead and hit stop and use scan. Again, the site is the same. It's the landfill. I'll just update my GPS coordinates and I'll hit submit. So here is the first pile that we did. As you can see, we've got a volume of 26.96 cubic meters and the weight is about 62 tons. So this information is then added to a report that is automatically generated and I'll show you that report in just a second. Here on the second pile, we have just over 200 meters cubed and approximately 461.52 tons of rocks. <laughs> so it's good that I've got this information here on my phone. Again, it'll all be shipped off and a report will be made. And this is pile number three. We've got 62.14 cubic meters and about 87 tons. And what LiDAR X3 will do is generate a report for you as well as a DXF file that you can use to bring into CAD. So here I am in my emails. I see all the different uh, emails that I got from LiDAR X3. So this right here is the DXF file that's generated. So I can bring this into any kind of drafting software I want. And this right here is the report. It's a PDF file. I'll just open it up and it looks something like this. So I could take this information and do whatever I want with it uh, or just send it as is, totally up to you. Okay, now I'm gonna use my Mavic 3 Enterprise and using RTK corrections, I'll be able to accurately map this site and compare the results of the volumes that we got with the iPhone using a drone. All right, I've got the drone all set up. Our mission plan looks good. We are connected to RTK and we have a fixed reading. So everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next, upload the mission and we will start flying.
There he goes. Taking a look here, we're more than halfway there. Drone is right over our head. And I'm flying this at 100 feet above ground level so I can maintain a really high GSD. And the resolution of the imagery will be just spectacular. It looks like we're maintaining a fixed RTK status. Signal looks good. Drone is just flying away. And it's wrapping it up here. And there it is. Now that we've collected data both on the iPhone and the drone, let's head inside to process the data from the imagery on the drone and compare the two using AutoCAD Civil 3D. All right, let's take a look at this data. So I processed the imagery on Pix4D Matic. I've generated a point cloud and I exported that point cloud and brought it into AutoCAD Civil 3D. As you can see here, this is the photogrammetry point cloud generated by the Mavic 3 Enterprise. And these are the stockpiles right here. And this is the tin that we created. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this into object viewer, zooming into piles one, two, and three. And this surface is what we're going to use to calculate the volume and compare it between the drone and the iPhone. Now the LiDAR X3 app exports a DXF file for your stockpile, which then you can use to bring into AutoCAD Civil 3D. This right here is the first pile, and I'm gonna go ahead and open this up in object viewer so we can see it in 3D. Let's set the visualization as realistic. Stick. And there we go, this is the first stockpile that we measured. Looks pretty clean, I like it. All aspects of this are covered. Next, this is the second stockpile that we measured. Let's open it up in Object Viewer. Everything is covered for the most part. There are some spikes in the tin model, and that's just from noise that was captured with the scan. Usually if it's like one vertical point, it doesn't really influence the volume too much. It's when you have you know a cluster of points that creates fake tin lines that adds to the surface. Surface. Okay, let's go into the third pile and object viewer and this right here again We see for the most part is pretty good There are a decent amount of gaps that are causing this, you know, the, these spikes in the surface Let me switch the visualization to x-ray and that way you can actually see the tin lines This is x-ray and there's the tin lines. So yeah, you see that's from the noise um, right there and then over in the areas where the tin lines are very long, that is from the gaps that we didn't capture any data. Now back at the drone data set, I've created polylines and these polylines were used to create a base surface. So that's an estimation of what the ground looks like beneath the stockpile and taking the difference between the base and the actual stockpile will give us the volume. So this right here is for the first pile, as you can see, and over here, this is the tire pile. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and type in volume dashboard. So I'm going to create a new surface and I'm going to name this surface pile one and this will be pile one base, okay? And the comparison surface will be drone tin. Okay, and it will calculate our volume for us and there it is. Now we're gonna look at the fill adjusted column um, and this is the fill material to the base. We don't really care for cut because we're not actually cutting anything, we're filling to the top. So here we have 27.16 cubic meters. Okay, let's do the second one, pile two, and the base surface will be pile two base, and the comparison surface will be drone tin. Okay, we have our second pile. Let's do another one, pile three, and base surface will be pile three base, and comparison surface will be drone tint. Okay, and again, these are based off of the drone data that we're going to now compare with the iPhone using the LiDAR X3 app. If you guys enjoy learning about surveying, then definitely be sure to check out our new online school, thesurveyschool.com, where we are now publishing on-demand survey courses that you can follow at your own pace. By signing up today and joining the waitlist, you'll receive a free in-depth guide about automatic levels and surveying total stations, providing you valuable information about differential leveling and surveying 
survey traversing. Again, join the surveyschool.com and be a part of our online surveying community. And now I'm going to calculate the volume using those DXF files from the iPhone and see if the results on Civil 3D match those that we got from LiDAR X3. So this right here is pile one and I'm going to select this tin and extract the boundary so that we have an exterior line that we can then build a new surface and we'll call this surface base. We'll say okay and then we can add that boundary line. All right, perfect. So now if I select this, go into object viewer, you can see we've got a base surface that we can calculate from. Okay, all looks good. Let's do volume dashboard and we're going to create a new volume select this, we'll call this pile one iPhone, and the base will be just the base surface, and the comparison surface will be pile one. There we go, we've got our polio, it is at 26.74 cubic meters. I like it. For pile two, we got 199.73. Pile three, 62.02. Now let's put everything into an Excel spreadsheet and see our results. Okay, so I've imported all of the data from the drone and the iPhone using Civil 3D and LiDAR X3. Now we're going to be calculating the percent difference between all of these data to ensure that everything is matching and that the iPhone data on LiDAR X3 is accurate. To begin, I wanna make sure that the data on Civil 3D matches. So we're gonna be comparing between the drone and the iPhone data. So we'll start by saying equals, and then I'll use the absolute value function, and then we will select the iPhone data minus the drone data on Civil 3D, and then I'm going to divide by the drone data. And I will select and drag this for all three piles. So piles one and three are within one and a half percent, which is really, really good. I think because of the size, our differences are a lot less. But even pile number two is within 5%. So that's really, really good um, when it comes to volume calculations. Next, let's see the differences between Civil 3D and LiDAR X3 for the iPhone. This will make sure that the data that we imported from LiDAR X3 into Civil 3D is working well, um, which will validate the accuracy that we got from our benchmark data set, the drone. Again, I will say equals absolute value of, and I will take the LiDAR X3 data set first, minus the Civil 3D data set for the iPhone, divided by the Civil 3D data set. Okay, and we'll drag, and all of these are under 1%. Actually, pile number three is right on, which is awesome. I love that. Okay, last one, we'll be comparing the iPhone data set on LiDAR X3 to our benchmark data set, the drone data. So we'll say equals the absolute value of, LiDAR X3 data minus drone, and I will then divide by the drone data, okay, and we'll drag this, and again, we are within one to one and a half percent for piles one and three, and still under five percent for pile number two. So all this data is under five percent, which is very accurate when it comes to volumetric measurements. So what is my recommendation for using an iPhone to do stockpile reports? If your stockpile is around one to 200 cubic meters, you've got smaller piles that you know are on your site, then there's no need to pull out a drone and fly it and process the data. You could do it all on your phone and while you're on the site, get your calculations using the LiDAR X3 app. If you guys would like to learn more about LiDAR X3, I'd recommend checking out their website, LiDARX3.com, where you can find a free 30-day trial for LiDAR X3. Again, thank you LiDAR X3 for sponsoring today's video. If you guys liked what you saw, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.